Thank you, Robert. I bet you think I put poison or something in that water. You killed him, didn't you? Yes. Schizophrenia, what are you talking about? Split personalities. It's two identities in one body. Pretty soon, there won't be anyone left here but me. Welcome. My name is Essex, and this is my home. And this is yours for as long as you care to stay. <laughs> Extraordinary game, chess. One of the many forms of recreation we provide for our guests here at Mansfield House. You see, it originated in the Far East over a thousand years ago. And today it's becoming increasingly popular all over the world. It's uh, deceivingly harmless looking, isn't it? Yet, it's a sort of war game. At least it's based on war. Attack. Defend. Capture. Checkmate. Of course, it uh, requires two players, that is, under ordinary circumstances. But not all circumstances are ordinary. Some are absolutely astonishing. Mrs. Cameron. How are you? Very well, thank you. How's Robert today? Oh, he's much better, thank Good. you. He's going to be back in school before long. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I have some more homework assignments for him. assignments. Good. Take him up to him, huh? Oh, come on, honey. I've had a lousy day. I'm beat. But he's so lonely. He's up there all alone all day. There's nobody to talk to, nobody to play with. Well, what about you? Well, I'm only his mother. Well, I want to, but I haven't been able to reach him lately. I know. But try, huh? He's just so, so wrapped up in himself lately. Okay. Hi, Bob. Hi, Dad. Have a good day? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fine. What about you? 
The same. Oh, here's your uh, homework for next week. Miss Gilden, bring it. Uh, uh, yeah. You uh, keeping up with your schoolwork? Pretty well. Good. Because uh, maybe for your birthday, if you do, uh, you'll just get that special chess set that you wanted. Gee, that's great. Well, now, wait, wait, wait. Now, I said maybe. Now, that's if you keep up with your schoolwork. I will. I know you will, son. I'll uh, see you later. That's right. Then you're not real, are you? Oh, yes. I'm real, all right. Your move. Why is it that cat only shows up when there's food around? That's one you can eat. Oh, honey, that's terrible. Hi, McGregor. Here, kitty, kitty. your time, you know. You can't beat me. Why not? Miss Gilden says I'm a very good chess player. Who's Miss Gilden? My teacher. She taught me how to play. I don't like her. You don't even know her. I don't have to. Are you going to stay around? Why? Do I bother you? Of course not. I made you up. I can unmake you. Checkmate. Mexico admitted the first colonists from the southern United States to the Brazos River. That general area would later become known as Texas. The Mexican government imposed many regulations meant to keep the area from being overrun by incoming foreigners. Robert, I know it's your first day back, but try to pay attention. You must remember that Texas, at that time, was a foreign country. Some people think it still is. <laughs> Robert, may I see that? Just 
reaching for your notebook. Give it to me, please. Oh, Robert, you're being excessively difficult today. I'm surprised that you find this more important than your classwork. Well, since you can't pay attention in class, we'll see how you get along after class. Suppose he is Wordsworth. I hope he's gone. I hope he doesn't come back. Robert, I must say, I don't know what to make of you. I realize that unfortunate accident kept you out a long time, but it's no excuse for this daydreaming in class and that morbid drawing. What were you thinking about, Robert? I don't want to tell you. I'm sorry, that's not acceptable. We used to be friends, Robert, and friends have to be honest with each other. If you'd only tell me... Robert, I demand that you stop this foolishness at once and tell me what was so important when your mind should have been on history. You won't like it. Answer me, Robert. I was thinking I'd like to kill you, Miss Gilden. I was thinking I'd like to see you dead. Yes, come in. What's this, Miss Gilden? I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Harkness, but it's a problem of discipline. I had to keep Robert after school today. Robert? Well, that's unusual, isn't it? Yes, it is. Robert, sit down. It's all right. Please. No, thank you. Go ahead, Robert. Well, Miss Gilden made me stay after school because I wasn't paying attention in class. Ah. And that's true. I wasn't paying attention. But then she kept at me to tell her what I was thinking. It wasn't anything, Mr. Harkness. But she kept at me. And she came at me. She said, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you'd like to kill me. You're thinking you'd like to see me dead. That's not true. Well, perhaps you'd like to explain, Miss Gilden. It's a lie. I don't know why he's doing this. Tell him the truth, Robert. Tell him. No, please! Well, that's enough, Miss Gilden. I will not have my students intimidated. But it's, it's a lie. He twisted it. He turned it around. What's the matter, Miss Gilden? Uh, my pencil. My gold pencil, you know, the one my mother gave me. It, I use it all the time. It's very valuable. Perhaps you left it in your classroom. Why don't you go and look for it? Uh, I'll talk to Robert. Thank you. Yes. Yes.
supposed to be for chess. I don't like that, Miss Gildon. But she's nice. She's always been nice to me. I don't like her. I told you I wouldn't like her. And I don't think she'll like what's going to happen to her. You might like some of these apricots for your breakfast. Oh, thank you, Joan. Mother and I... We always enjoyed your preserves. I miss your mother, too. Doesn't seem like it was only three months ago. I still expect to look up and see her in the garden. I know. Well, how long is it until you say goodbye to those classrooms full of kids and marking papers every night? One more term. But then, travel? Oh, no, I'm afraid not, Joan. Not on the kind of pension money I'll be getting. But it's enough to keep me comfortable and independent, and I can take care of the garden the way I've always wanted to. Will you miss the kids? Yes. <laughs> Most of them. Hi, Bob. Hi, Dad. Been having any trouble with flies up here? No. Why? Your mother's been finding a lot of dead insects in the house lately. New book helping any? Yes. Good. Dad, why don't you learn to play chess? I'd like that. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I'd like to learn to play chess, but I used to lose the Chinese checkers. I'm afraid you're going to have to be the genius in this family, and I'll be your chauffeur, and I'll drive you around when you become one of those grandmasters. How do you know about grandmasters? Well, I've uh, been reading up a little. You don't usually read much. Well, it never hurts to improve yourself. Are you, uh, you okay? Fine. Dad, have you ever read about everybody having a double somewhere? A double? You know, um, a look-alike. Yeah, well, it's all kind of spooky, if you ask me. <laughs> hey, listen, it's 9 o'clock already. Now, you've been up since early this morning. Now, don't you think it's time to pack it in? Sure. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Why don't you learn to play, Dad? I'd like that. What's the matter? Tired of me? Checkmate. Maybe you're just tired of being beaten every time. I needed you to play chess with. School wasn't supposed to be part of it. I don't think you should go anymore. I like going. Besides, I tell you everything that happens, don't I? It's almost like you're there yourself. Thank you, Robert. I bet you think I put poison or something in that water. But I wouldn't do anything like that, Miss Gildon. Honest, I wouldn't. I didn't do anything! Robert, listen to me. I didn't do anything to the water, Miss Gildon! Honest, I didn't! Robert! Robert, I demand an apology for this outrageous behavior. I'm waiting, Robert. All right. Apologize, Miss Gildon. I apologize, Miss Gildon, and it won't happen again. I apologize, Miss Gildon, and it won't happen again.
Kenny Dillon's prescription for screaming nerves. It's almost as good as chicken soup. Thank you, Jenny. Miss Kilden, you've been overdoing it, haven't you? I know, I know. Putting final exams together can get to you. No, it's just one of those things where a good student is going through a bad phase or something. I'm sure he'll snap out of it. Well, even if he doesn't, the term is almost over. Another few days and he won't be able to give you any more trouble. I'm sure you're right. I hope so. You all saw it happen. She said I poisoned the water. Something like that. Right out of nowhere. You poisoned that water. I couldn't believe that. You poisoned that water. Chow, you can just forget it. You eat what's served. Oh! There's nothing in him at all. Oh. How did it happen? We don't know, Bob. We just found him dead. Somebody killed him. Now, we don't know that. Why do you say that, honey? Did you hear someone in the house today when I was out shopping? No. Maybe when I took a nap. Well, sometimes... Sometimes ugly things happen. Look, I'll, I'll find a place in the yard and, and bury him. Sweetie, from now on, when you're here alone, I want you to lock your bedroom door. OK, Mom. I'm dying. I wish you'd go to sleep earlier. You look so pale. I have been. You. Take care of McGregor. Thanks, Mom. dead. I know. Want to play? There were a lot of flies dead the other day, too. What do you know about my cat? The same thing you do. Here's a cat. He's dead. Why didn't you come when I first called you? Because I'm not your pet. I've got a life of my own to lead. But you can't. I mean, I made you up. I can do anything I want to, and you can't stop me. Not you, or your dumb parents, or anybody. You killed him, didn't you? Yes. Why? Because I needed him. I can kill anybody I need. And the blame is all on you. Because I don't exist. Good morning. Not up yet, huh? Oh, 
a little tired. Uh, are you sleeping okay? Well, the cast is a little uncomfortable. It itches. But the doctor said that would happen. I know. I wish I could scratch it for you. Dad leave? Uh-huh. He looked in on you earlier, but you were still asleep. I'll fix you some breakfast. Mom? Uh-huh? Have you ever heard about everybody having a double someplace? Oh, yeah, sure. Matter of fact, when I was in school, there was a girl that everyone said looked exactly like me. I never thought so. I've got one. You have? A double? Not exactly. More like another me. Where is this? At school? Here. He was just here one night. I thought he was just for chess. But then he killed McGregor and all those flies. Mom, I'm scared. Oh, no, darling. No. There's nothing to be scared about. There's nothing to be scared about. Nothing to be scared about. talking during examinations. If I hear anyone talking, he receives a zero immediately. You don't even eat enough to keep a mouse alive. Some days I'm just not hungry. Well, it's a good thing they don't pay you for lying because you're not very good at it. Jenny. Come on. Every year you get more end of the term presents than any other teacher in this school. And this year, only a few. What's wrong? Nothing, really. Miss Gilden, there's a rumor running around among the students and some of the teachers, too, that there's some kind of friction in your class. Friction? Not in my classroom, Jenny. Why don't you discuss it with Harkness? I hardly think he'd be interested in how many gifts I received this year. He disapproves of the practice anyway. seen my gold pencil. I accidentally left it here on the desk when we went to lunch. Now it seems to be gone. Does anyone know where it is? That pencil is important to me. I'd like to have it back. Very well, I'll give you one last chance. Everyone will close his eyes. I'll turn my back. And whoever took the pencil can return it to the desk. No one will be punished and no questions will be asked, nothing will be said if the pencil is returned. All right? Now, everyone cover your eyes and I'm going to turn my back. 
You have exactly one minute to put that pencil back where you found it. In my 35 years as a teacher, I've seen a few petty thieves in this classroom. But to steal something like this, I might have known it. Robert, give me that pencil this instant. I don't have your pencil, Miss Gill. Give it to me, Robert. But it's mine. I can steal. Give me that pencil. Don't use my pencil, Miss Gildon. So it is. Miss Gildon, I think you owe me an apology. Don't you? I'm very sorry, Robert. I seem to have made a mistake. It won't happen again. so good. He's stronger than I am now. My mom thinks I've just been reading too much science fiction or something. I can't even prove he exists. And even if I could, what could I do about it? He knows every thought I have. Are you sure you didn't lose the pencil somewhere else? Yes, I'm sure. I distinctly recall putting it on the desk just before the lunch bill. Whoever took it might still return it. No. He had his chance. I guess I'll never see it again. I suppose you think I'm foolish making such a fuss over an old lead pencil. I even have trouble getting refills for it these days. No, you're not being foolish. It was very special to you. You have a right to be upset that it's been stolen. Did you report it to the school office? Oh, yes. No one else seemed very impressed. What could have happened to them? They were fine and healthy yesterday. They're dry, absolutely dry. Nothing I know of could have done this so fast, so completely. Plants don't just die like that. Playing. What's that? Well, just something I found around school. Let me see it. This belongs to Miss Gildon. She always has it with her. Really? Where did you get this? Oh, I just found it around school. What have you been doing to her? Nothing. You said she wouldn't like what was going to happen to her. Most people don't. Like you. The doctor thinks you're getting better, but you're getting weaker all the time. You're lying. I can't lie to you. That's a lie. You know what I'm thinking, but you can block me out. You've got an imagination as bad as that Miss Gildon's. Look, I told you once, she's a nice lady. You have to give this pencil back to her. 
Now that's where you're wrong. She's not nice, and I don't have to give the pencil back to her. The next lesson is to teach you that you can't tell me what to do anymore. No, don't! Please! Worth. Wordsworth? Yes? I have something for you. It's a present. Friend of turn. I gave a lot of thought to what you might like. Want me to show you? There you are. It's the biggest box the candy store had. I used a whole week's allowance to get it especially for you. Did you want it, Miss Gilder? Did you think I would after all that's happened? Well, I suppose I'll just have to eat some of this candy right here in front of you, if that's what you want. Why should I want that? So you see, I didn't put poison in any of them, Miss Gilder. You'll believe me then, won't you? Are you all right? Did she hurt you? No, this is just a present. <laughs> Mrs. Dillon, Mrs. Dillon, will you take Robert down to the nurse's office? Immediately. Yes, Mr. Harkness. It was a present. Why did she do it? It was a present. Come on, let's break this up. Everybody out now. Come on. Everybody out. In light of this unfortunate incident, Miss Gilden, I'm afraid I can no longer defend you. This thing has become much too involved. What? I don't know. I simply cannot ignore all the parents that have complained to the school board about you. Their children seem frightened of you. They say you intimidate not only them, but Robert in particular. The school board wanted to take action immediately, but I persuaded them to reconsider because of your long experience and service to this school. But after this, I'm afraid I must agree with the school board and let them dismiss you. Dismiss me? You can't do that. My tenure, my pension, if you dismiss me, I'll lose it. I only have half a term, just six months. Without my pension, I couldn't live. I'm sorry. Please, I can't lose it after all these years, please. I'm sorry. I said I was sorry, and I am. But that's the end of it. The school board will notify you officially. But lie! He's lying! Robert's lying! Can't you see that? You can't fire me when it's all his fault! It's all his fault, and you can't fire me for that! You...
schizophrenia. What are you talking about? Split personalities. It's two identities in one body. Bobby is a perfectly normal, healthy boy. He's quiet and he's introverted. He's weak and he's getting weaker. He's not getting better. He's getting worse. And he's scared. First the cat, then the hamster. Oh, now, wait a minute. He can't even get downstairs by himself. Molly. He broke that airplane. What? What airplane? It's a model airplane that we were working on together. He broke it, believe me, he crushed it. And when I asked him about it, he said it was an accident. Darling, that just proves my point. There's... There's a different feeling in the house. It's... It's nothing I can put a word to. It's just... It's just a feeling. And Bobby's different, too. Please, Jack. He needs help. Don't you think I'd help my own son if I could? Oh, darling, of course, of course you would. I don't mean that. I mean he needs a doctor's help. He needs psychiatric help. Please, Jack. Please. Okay, honey. Okay. Hello, Miss Gildon. How are you today? What do you want? I came to visit you. Didn't you say you like to have students visit you? Besides, I came to see how your rose bushes were. Don't be afraid. You know I wouldn't hurt you. Don't you? bad about your hamster. I'm going to get rid of you. Really? Look at you. Tied up in that cast. Weak. You'll be easier to handle than that Miss Gildon was. Was? What do you mean, was? She's dead. Fell on her rose shoes, poor thing. You killed her. You kill everything. You're killing me. It won't be much of a loss. No one will know. Not even your parents. What do you mean? Pretty soon, there won't be anyone left here but me. Why are you like this? I don't understand why we're so different, if you're part of me. I'm the other side of the coin, the dark side. Everyone has a dark side. I don't want you to be part of me. Let's finish this game. Our last game. If I lose, I'll go back where I came from. But you won't lose. I can't beat you. Oh, I want to be fair. Go on, move. thinking about my strategy, not yours. You can't keep me blocked out of your thoughts like that for long. You should have seen that coming. 
Maybe I did. Bad move. No, no Robert. Robert. The knight. What are you doing here? Go ahead, Robert. Play the knight to rook six. But he knows what I'm thinking. He doesn't know what I'm thinking. Just do as I tell you. Don't think of anything else. That's not fair. No. But whoever told you everything would be fair? The knight, Robert. Now, bishop to bishop six. Checkmate. Wait a minute. Can you do that? I don't think you can do that. You know what I know, remember? And now, young man, you and I have a great deal to discuss privately. Privately? I don't understand, Miss Gilden. Shall I paint the picture for you, Robert? Think of a classroom in a little black corner of space where you and I will talk about dead rose bushes and chocolate candies and golden pencils forever. No. No, I don't want to go there. Neither did I, Robert. But since you arranged the trip, you can keep me company. No. Come along oh, now. No. Come along. Mother, Miss Gilden, that hurts. How you feeling, son? Much better, Dad. Good. Bobby, a doctor is coming by to see you later. A new one. What for? Well, he, he just wants to take a look at you. Sure. OK. What's that, Bobby? It's a present. A present from Miss Gilden. Imagine conjuring up an imaginary opponent, an extension of yourself who knows your every move even before you make it. I don't think I'd like that at all. No, not at all. Robert doesn't play chess very often now, and when he does, it's always with a real opponent. Can't say I blame him. And now, here are some scenes from our next adventure on Ghost Story. Because you kept them apart. <laughs> <laughs> 